His study of religion. That was the study he published in 1912. Though he has been working on it for a long time, from 1902 to 1912. This was his last major work. And in this study, he also demonstrated the functionalist approach or functional explanation, how to provide a functional explanation. If you recall, when we discussed his methodology, we identified two kinds of explanations, causal and functional. In his study of suicide, he talked of causal explanation. In this study, he has demonstrated functional explanation. The title of the study was Totemism, Totemism, the elementary form of religious life. Totemism, the elementary form of religious life. Now, presuming that majority of people here are new to sociology, so I will first explain to you the meaning of totemism. Totemism is a type of religious practice. It is a worship of an object which is considered the totem. The object may be animate or inanimate. That means it may have life or may not have life. It may be an animal, it could be a tree, it could be a rock. It could be anything. Now, this object is considered by the people, by the believers, by the members of the group as their ancestor. Ancestor. They claim to have descended from this object. See, among Hindus in India, cow has something of a totem-like status. It is not exactly a totem, but quite totem-like. There are other societies, particularly in Australia and North America, Red Indians, They claim their descent from various animals, like in Melanesia, a cluster of islands near Australia, there is a tribe which claims that they have descended from a pig. So they don't kill the pig, they respect the pig, because pig is their ancestor. In our society, if you tell somebody sewer ke bache, he would feel offended. But for them it is a matter of pride that they have descended from a pig. But it is only a mythical ancestor. 
that means the exact genealogical link cannot be traced. Totem is a mythical ancestor. It's a part of the myth. As per the belief that they have descended from this object. There is no link. How many generations ago, when did they start descending? When did the pig become human like? So, in India also, there are a lot of communities which trace their descent from either animals or plants. And because they consider it their ancestor, they worship it. They jointly participate in worshipping that object. That worship is called totemism. So, Durkheim says, totemism, the elementary form of religious life. Elementary means the simplest. See, a compound can be divided into elements, but element cannot be further subdivided. So, it is the simplest form. So, he first justified the study of a simple religion. He claimed that totemism is the simplest religion. So, his argument was that the fundamental characteristics of religion those fundamental characteristics which are universal, the characteristics which are present in every religion, those characteristics can be identified by observing the religion in its simplest form. in its earliest form, because later on, as the religions develop, they become more complex. So, the true character of religion gets camouflaged, you know, camouflaged to be hidden. So, because of the complexities introduced by priests and prophets, they are religious specialists who complicate the process of religious worship. So, we have to look for a religion which has no priests, no prophets, the simplest religion, no religious specialist. Such a religion would give us the idea about the true nature, the fundamental character of a religion. The character which is also to be found in advanced religions. Even religions of advanced societies will also have those characteristics. But those characteristics cannot be easily understood and discovered because of the complexity. Because they stand camouflaged. <coughs> that is how he justified the study of a simple religion. That the fundamental character of religion is the same whether it is a complex religion or a simple religion. This point clear? So, that is how he built a case for the study of totemism. Now, he wanted to make positivist study of religion. He wanted to study religion using positive science methods. And therefore, the religion has to be defined in such a manner 
that it becomes amenable to positive study. So he wanted to arrive at a positivistic definition, a definition which makes religion amenable to positive science methods. Now, as you might recall, Durkheim also had said in his methodology that all preconceived notions must be abundant. So, he did that in his study of suicide, he repeats it in his study of religion as well. There were various, you can say, definitions and explanations of religion which were prevalent at that time. So, he critically evaluates each one of them in order finally to arrive at a positivistic definition. A British social anthropologist Edward Tyler, T Y L O R, Tyler, not Taylor. Tyler. He had written a Tyler, Edward Tyler. He had written a book called Primitive Cultures. Primitive Cultures. And there he had developed his theory of religion in that book, wherein he said that animism was the earliest type of religion, animism, anima is a latin word which means the spirit or the soul, anima is a latin word which means the spirit or the soul. So, he said, worship of the spirit or soul was the earliest type of religion. He, tried, he was an evolutionist, so he tried to also suggest an evolutionary model that animism changed into polytheism, <coughs> which further changed into monotheism. Theism means God, Polythe poly means many. The worship of many gods, that is polytheism. And mono means one. So, worship of a single god, like in Christianity, Islam, Judaism, you have just one god. So, Hinduism is polytheism. So, polytheism later on developed into monotheism. That is Tyler's theory. Now, I would not go into detail, except we will focus on that part of the theory which is relevant from Durkheim's point of view. So, he said that animism was the earliest religion because it developed in response to certain existential puzzles, certain existential puzzles faced by the primitive man, some conundrums, some puzzles related to life, like death, like dream. Now, yes please, repeat what? I have said so many things, I do not know which one you want me to repeat. Last, that animism was claimed by Tyler as the earliest religion. 
and then he goes on to say that animism developed and as a response of the primitive man to certain existential puzzles certain puzzles or conundrums related to life most importantly death that primitive man had to explain what is death now they did not have a doctor to perform autopsy and explain what has happened but they needed an answer nevertheless dream they did not have a freud to tell them that it is subconscious they saw somebody in the dream and when they woke up that person was not there how to explain it they needed to understand that so like that there are so many puzzles of life by inventing the idea of a spirit or a soul they were able to answer all these questions so the idea of soul is a human invention because now once you have the idea of soul that means non corporeal existence idea of soul means we exist at two levels physical existence in the body that is corporeal and another is spiritual existence where we do not have a body but we exist nevertheless or that's how we believe at least so when you say that spirit or the soul has left the body hindus believe in that atma leaves the body that is how a person dies nobody has seen the atma but we believe nevertheless so if we see a dream we say somebody's soul visited you they further elaborated on their belief that when we are in a sleeping state soul gets freed from the body it can wander it can travel it can go places so it can visit friends and neighbors and that's how people get to see dreams that was the way according to tyler primitive man explained life experience existential puzzles and therefore he said this was the earliest religion this was one of the explanation durkheim said in fact if we look at the definition of religion given by tyler he says you can write it down if you want to animism is belief in spiritual being spiritual being now durkheim starts by criticizing the definition itself he says religion is not simply beliefs religion always has some practices as well and they are interconnected religion is always beliefs and practices different kind of practices you know like among the hindus people who are religious they visit the temple there is a temple close to the place where i live so i see devout ladies in the morning at 5 o'clock coming to the temple even in the winter time and pulling the poor god out of the quilt giving it a bath then feeding it all right treating the god like a baby so this is the practice that you have to perform only then you feel the god will reciprocate and do the needful for you so every religion has some practices catholics drink wine and eat bread this is a practice 
by which they are supposed to enter into a communion with the Christ. Wine is the blood and bread is the flesh, symbolizes the flesh of Christ. This is a practice. So, every religion involves some practices. So, it is wrong to define religion only as beliefs. Religion is beliefs and practices. One. Secondly, he says, this definition renders religion incapable of being studied scientifically. If you define religion in this way, because the spirit cannot be seen, it cannot be observed. Scientific study means all knowledge should be based on observation. How to see the spirit? Religion incapable of being studied scientifically. A posit this is not a definition suitable for a positive science study. And moreover, it reduces religion to a kind of an illusion. It reduces religion to a kind of illusion that first you invent the idea of spirit which is unreal because you have created the notion of spirit and then you start worshipping them, you start loving them, you start respecting them. It is a make-believe. Furthermore, he says if animism was the earliest religion, in that case, ancestor worship should have been a universal practice. Because once you worship the soul, obviously you will worship the soul of somebody you love. You will worship the soul of your grandfather or great-grandfather, whoever has died. So you will start worshipping ancestors. But he says, Except for India and China, we do not find ancestor worship. You might be aware, in India, in the month of September, August or September, there is a fortnight which is called Pitrupaksh, where you perform Shraddha ceremony and worship your dead ancestors. That is a Hindu practice. So, he says that practice is there only among Indians and Chinese. No other society has ancestor worship. So, you cannot claim that animism was the universal religion which developed first. That is how he rejects Tyler's definition.